Hello. Good morning, everyone. Um, so we're, we're, um, today we're presenting on the state of the market. So it'll be Jordan and myself. Um, I'm Dan, um, Director of Research and Semi Analysis. I look mostly at networking and total cost of ownership. And Jordan's uh, in our AI engineering team. Uh, he mainly works with ClusterMax. Um, so, so today what we're going to do is we're going to give a brief explanation of semi-analysis. We'll talk about the different teams, the different uh, competencies, and we'll sort of take you on a journey about you know, how you get from the total cost, the, the system costing, you know, chip costing, um, bomb costing, all the way down to um, cost per million tokens. We'll show you how each uh, semi-analysis practice area helps you with that. Um, but first, let's talk briefly about what we do. Um, so, you know, we obviously do research analysis. We take a product-first approach, a very technical, um, you know, most of our team is from the industry, and we sort of blend that with ex-investors, -invest um, you know, hedge fund, buy-side people, a um, couple sell-side people as well. Um, you know, we, we work across the entire stack, all the way from sub-assemblies, uh, sub materials, semi-cap equipment, testing, packaging, all the way to tokenomics, and you sort of see how that, how that works. We have 11 people in Asia, 26 in North America, five in Europe, and we're 42 and growing. Um, obviously, we have the newsletter. You're probably all familiar with that. Um, and this is mostly technology focused. Um, so we talk about key trends. We sort of deep dive on product um, and sort of talk about what that means for the industry. Um, to go a level deeper, we also do market intelligence models and products. So accelerator model, TCO model, networking model, data center industry, and our teams are roughly oriented around that. So we have a data center practice group, we have accelerator practice group, TCO practice group, networking, and, and so on. And later I'll show you the stack where each of those uh, play into that. And then we have the engineering, which Jordan will, will talk to you a little bit about. Um, so we also have um, you know, tools. You would have seen we launched Inference Max, which is a completely free tool for you all to understand the throughput of GPUs um, across models, across FP4, FP8, um, across you know, different interactivity levels. Um, so you know, let's talk quickly about key trends. I'll hand over to Jordan. He'll take you through a few key trends, and then he'll take you through Cluster Max and Inference Max, um, explain you know, those two things. Those are very recent this year. And um, you know, I'll come back and show you how that fits into this whole AI tokenomics uh, stack. So Jordan? Thanks, Dan. OK, great. So I'm going to talk about uh, five key trends that we are seeing as analysts looking at the industry. And then, as Dan said, I'm going to walk through Inference Max and Cluster Max, where we actually get hands-on experience and use that to influence how we do our research. Uh, the first key trend that we've really been seeing is uh, scaling through the memory wall. Uh, basically, when it comes to new materials, uh, new architectures, this is having a big change in terms of how people are fabricating chips. Uh, the second trend is you know, really based on uh, the new materials. We, we also have a need for advanced packaging. Uh, we've seen an evolution of 2.5D and, uh, and really a lot of uh, chips coming to the market that depend on 3D stacking, logic on top of uh, memory or memory on top of logic. Um, the, uh, the third one here that I have a few charts to go with and which I'll spend some time talking about is basically that at the fab level, we're seeing HPC and AI driving um, the shift to new technology, whereas in the past, this was mobile. Um, so some charts to show this basically, uh, since 10 nanometer up until two nanometer, we saw that mobile was leading the trend of adopting new um, fabrication technology first, whereas now two nanometer is really breaking that streak. Uh, you can see that as TMC, TSMC introduces new uh, process technology, uh, the average content of a TSMC um, you know, produced chip into a smartphone versus a server has really grown. And uh, we've also seen that the average selling price of a given GPU is significantly growing as we go from the Ampere generation to Hopper, Blackwell, and then in the future with Vera Rubin. Uh, the fourth key trend that we have here is that as a result of new chips being hotter and more heterogeneous, uh, there's actually a reimagination of how memory and networking is being, um, being used in the data center. Uh, so this is everything from the shift to HBM4 and just the use of HBM in general, as well as co-packaged optics for some of the scale-up networking. Um, and then the return of copper, you know, seriously seeing people adopting copper at scale, especially with those rack scale architectures from NVIDIA. Uh, the fifth trend here is just in the data center. So you can see as we're stacking up these trends, we're getting from like individual process technology to the chips, to the actual data center. And here, the biggest thing we're seeing, I think is obvious, everybody at OCP is contending 
with the revolution in power and cooling. Um, liquid cooling is now the new norm, and if you're building a data center, you really need to contend with this when it comes to both installing stuff and maintaining it over time. And then finally, snuck in a key trend related to LLM inference, which will lead me into talking about some of our hands-on experience here. Uh, basically, the biggest thing that we've seen about existing benchmarks is that they do not necessarily use the state-of-the-art uh, technologies for running inference as a system across rack or data center scale uh, deployments of these chips. And so what we've really tried to do with Inference Max is contend with this key trend and, and show people what the real performance on GPUs is expected to be on known workloads that are close to, if not state of the art. Okay, so let's talk about Inference Max in a little bit more detail. Um, just, you know, to say this, if you, if you didn't get a chance, and Dylan had a presentation yesterday, our, our CEO and founder, and um, he, uh, he basically ran through Inference Max in more detail than what I'm going to do right now. If you'd like to see the live data from last night's nightly runs, inferencemax.ai, and there's a suite of open source benchmarks that run across a number of different runtimes, but most importantly, a number of different chips, seven of them. Three from AMD, the MI300X, 325, 355, as well as four from NVIDIA, H100, H200, B200, and the GB200 NVL72 rack scale system. Uh, notably, these charts that we're publishing have configurable Y and X axes. I think this is something that people kind of missed with Inference Max when we released it. You're welcome to go in there and configure if you'd like to see a cost per token, uh, a cost per, um, based on the TCO for a typical hyperscaler versus a NeoCloud, the cost per um, all-in utility megawatt, um, all sorts of, you know, analysis that, that really is based on the work that Dan's uh, team does goes into analyzing the results of these, um, of these benchmark runs. Uh, notably, this is open source and it's automated, so if you'd like to run this stuff on your own hardware, just fork the repo, start developing for your own stuff. Um, and uh, we have an open roadmap, so plans right now is to add new models. Uh, we're seeing everybody move away from dense models, so that we started with publishing with Llama 3.3, we're gonna quickly move to uh, DeepSeek 3.2 with sparse attention. Uh, we're also going to adopt the new Blackwell GPUs as soon as we can get access from our, uh, you know, partners. We're very thankful for the sponsorship there. Um, and then also uh, adding TPU and Tranium to the roadmap. Um, quick comment on what the data actually shows. Uh, if you see vendors talking about chips, the biggest thing that, uh, you know, we see as being mis misleading is that people either focus on throughput or interactivity. Interactivity being the, meaning tokens per second per user, and throughput being aggregate throughput tokens per second across all users. So instead of just giving one data point at each side of the curve, we graph the whole curve. So depending on how you want to tune the tokens per second per user, how much throughput can you get? How profitable is your endpoint going to be? How much power is it going to consume? Um, why this matters is that, again, we see different chip vendors kind of talking their book when it comes to, do they have a race car or do they have a school bus? We wanna show this whole trend together. Um, okay, moving on uh, to another example of hands-on research that we do. Uh, this is a project that, that uh, I work on a lot at Semi-Analysis, it's ClusterMax. Um, if you're not familiar, uh, prior to the time I even joined Semi-Analysis, uh, two very important articles in the world of NeoClouds came out, in fact, uh, Dan can take credit for coining that term, NeoCloud, that I've heard from a lot of people. I don't know if everybody knows that. Um, <laughs> there's uh, some other terms thrown around, baby cloud, diaper scaler. Anyway, NeoCloud, I think, was the we most We thought NeoCloud was, was accurate. <laughs> was the best, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and certainly they are giant. You know, many of these are measured in the gigawatts now and, and have big plans for the future. But two articles back as early as October of last year, so it's been over a year since Semi-Analysis talked about the NeoCloud playbook and anatomy and then the first version of ClusterMax came out. Um, ClusterMax is a ranking system that allows us to assess based on our hands-on experience as well as research talking to customers, how we assess the, the status of given NeoClouds. Uh, stay tuned, ClusterMax 2.0 is coming out very soon. Um, as an explanation of what ClusterMax means, uh, you can actually go in and log into uh, clustermax.ai and you can see a lot of the different criteria that we use to make an assessment of these NeoClouds. Um, we, we try to measure them across 10 different key dimensions. Importantly, we can test seven of these hands-on, but three of them we need to talk to customers about. We need to get information on pricing, we need to get information on the reliability at scale, and we need to understand their support experience. 
So in order to do that, uh, cluster max 2.0 by the numbers, uh, I ran these numbers last week, you know, subject to change, uh, but we're currently tracking 185 different Neo clouds. I've done hands-on testing with 62 of them. Uh, we've done 147 end user interviews uh, and counting. So if anybody here is using Neo clouds and would like to reach out to us, clustermax at semianalysis.com, we'd love to hear from you, hear about your hands-on experience. Um, it's been three months of effort so far, that's ticking up as well, and we've written over 40,000 words. So we're, we're past journey to the center of the earth and we're approaching the philosopher's stone in terms of number of words written in the article. You know? Okay, now handing it back over to Dan to talk a little bit about tokenomics. How does this research actually influence uh, some of the stuff that we, we publish? <laughs> yeah, th thanks Jordan. So um, I'll sort of complete the journey today. Um, and you know, in this AI tokenomics stack, you know, we'll see how everything Jordan talked about, what I talked about earlier, sort of connects all the dots. And um, what we're gonna do today is show you how to get from the chip cost, system cost, all the way down to dollars per million token. And then what we're gonna do with that is we're also gonna show you, um, you know, sort of the, for the first time, we're gonna actually show you how we can take token demand forecasts and turn that into number of systems and megawatts. And again, the missing piece um, that we only had until uh, last week was actually inference max, right? You know, having a rigorous benchmark for us to turn um, the, number of G, the number of tokens demanded into number of systems, right? And this will change you know, drastically over time. Our forecast you know, will change you know, as our new models and new systems, right? But we need a framework, right? So to take you through this stack, you know, we see at the very top, we've got our accelerator team, which does uh, chip design analysis to figure out what is the costing of the chip. We've got our, um, our bomb and ODM team, which builds up the system. We do line by line, um, you know, how many GPUs, how many heat sinks, fans, and how many transceivers, you know, um, networking. We look at the topography, how many switches, you know, two layer, three layer network. We're using disaggregated schedule fabric and, and so on and so forth. And then we can get to a total cluster cost, which is a 248,000 um, for an H200, which bundles in sort of everything, right? Everything you need for a cluster divided by a server. So the unit is per server. And from there, you can get into a dollar per GPU capital cost, and then when we combine um, input from our data center team, we can get to the comprehensive total cost of ownership, which is $1.41 uh, per hour. That's how much it costs to own, and a NeoCloud may rent it for $2, and so that's kind of their, their sort of margin there, right? Um, now, what Inference Max has allowed us to do for the first time is to take that cost of ownership, $1.41 per hour, and change it to um, dollars per million token, right? And it's obviously a function of how much does it cost to own the GPU per hour and how many tokens you can generate per hour, right? and then you get your um, 53 cents, in the case of uh, DeepSeq R1. Um, and where we'll sort of go with this uh, on the bottom part is your application layer, right? What does it mean for the application layer and the profitability? So let's, let's talk through some sort of interesting trends, right? Um, and so one thing we see, you know, obviously we see uh, chat GPT um, activity growing, you know, pretty remarkably. Um, no surprising the top two countries in terms of mobile app, India and the US with almost 70 million MAUs. Um, and you know, this is a pretty bullish chart, right? I think we know the trends, but I think the next chart is sort of even more bullish, right? Um, and what you'll see is just take note of which countries in the bottom, right? Singapore is a small country, right? India is a big country, but let's look at penetration rate. Now, um, the countries that are the smallest, right? And sort of the, you know, the advanced economically are the highest penetration, right? And the lowest penetration are sort of the largest ones. So you can kind of see where this is going, right? India's 4% penetration. So we're sort of just getting started, right, for, for many countries. Um, and so let's sort of look at, you know, sort of apply this framework to, um, you know, where it could go, right? So internet currently has about 66% weekly average user penetration rate, 80% uh, MAO. So we can think of, of 6.7 billion, this ex-China population we did it this way. So you can think of ex-China, the um, monthly active user internet, 3.6 billion. And we think the chat GPT app and desktop you know, we're probably approaching like a billion MAU now, right? So we can probably grow 3.5 times just on the numbers, right? And so, you know, when we sort of run our framework, and obviously it's DeepSeq R1, it's not chat GPT, it's not, you know, um, their models, but, um, you know, we would kind of estimate today 1.4 gigawatts, right? Applying this framework, you know, MAUs, you know, how many tokens per day, um, and using the inference throughput to, to calculate that, it's 913,000 GPUs. Um, but let's, let's sort of fast forward a little bit and see where we could get to, right? And you know, obviously the first time inference max has allowed us to do this. Um, obviously it's a framework. Um, the two variables that are gonna change a lot is gonna be inference throughput per G GPU, right? It's a function of 
the GPU's throughput and the models, which will change. Both will change, right? That's why we have inference, inference max. So every night you can see how that changes. And doubtless, you know, the assumption will change with this framework. The applications will change. So the assumption on sort of um, uh, the tokens per day is, is going to change a lot. But this is the framework, right? And if we sort of run this framework, we also have a tokenomics model which forecasts the number of tokens we're gonna, you know, the world is gonna demand. Um, um, so this is sort of based on that, which is why we call it the tokenomics um, model. But um, you know, if you take those assumptions and you combine that with inference max, then we get to about 12 gigawatts, and that's just for OpenAI, right? Um, let's look at um, you know, where we have, this is from a tokenomics model. Um, you know, OpenAI is just um, one of many, right? and there will certainly be more. There, there are AI natives coming up every day, and this is just consumer inference, right? We haven't even talked about enterprise. We haven't even talked about training. We haven't even sort of talked about all these other things that are stacked on top of that, right? So, you know, just for one person, 12 gigawatts in the future is, is probably just the tip of the iceberg. Um, you know, obviously we're seeing acceleration in compute spend, um, which sort of affirms what we're seeing. Um, um, let's talk a little bit, uh, you know, to kind of take us um, you know, into the Q&A. We'll just talk quickly about future plans. Um, you know, we're sort of hiring, right? <laughs> That's our main plan to keep growing. Um, so, you know, AI engineering, anything with cluster max, um, you know, TCO, general analyst team, you know, we're looking for folks to reach out to us. Um, and, you know, we'll go into Q&A, yeah? Thanks, everyone. Yep. So you just go up to the mics on the side. So in your, uh, in your projections up to 2030, right, uh, we see that you're using H200 on SGLang with FP8. Ah, okay, yeah. So how realistic is that since you already have data on GB200 and Inference Max, yeah. and it's 10x over competition, 10x over H200 already, right? Yep. Using so TensorRT LLM and FP4. Yeah, yeah. So, so you look at the footnote, it says for 20, so that's for 25 only, that's 735, right? And so um, you'll see that um, the, the 2028 is probably a blend, the fleet will blend, right? Because the, the leading edge you can think of as like thousands, right, perhaps? Um, but it's gonna, it's gonna blend with sort of the older ones and the malls may get more sophisticated, right? Um, so yeah, that's kind of the best framework. Uh, Jordan, do you have anything to add or? Yeah, look, it's, um, I think there's uh, a lot of questions as to what GB200 and GB300 MVL72 is being used for right now versus going into the future. It's our understanding that Currently, the Frontier Labs are primarily using the scale-up networks for inference and are not using it for training, but we believe that all of them are uh, trying to get it to work for training in the future. And the general trend has been that the new chips are used for training and the old chips are used for inference. So I'm not exactly sure that uh, H200 in use um, for inference in the near future and medium-term future is a bad assumption. Yeah, it'll blend through. There'll be large fleets of that still. Yeah. Hey, Dan and, and Jordan, thanks for the session. Uh, since you created this new cloud term, I just want to hear from you about how do you look at this market it's going to go, it's going to be consolidated really quick, or you will see more baby hyper, diaper hyperscalers coming up? Yeah, a lot of people ask this question. Thank you for the question. Just uh, what do we see as the future of NeoClouds? Uh, our definition of NeoCloud, to be clear, is anybody that exchanges access to GPUs for money. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you own the data center. In some cases, it doesn't even necessarily mean you own the GPUs. I think the trend for uh, sovereign um, uh, deployments of GPUs is underappreciated right now. And I think that the trend for uh, venture-backed startups in Silicon Valley that are deploying their own GPUs is overappreciated right now. So I think there's, it's possible that there will be some con consolidation. But generally speaking, every Frontier Lab we talk to describes how they are compute constrained. And it seems like anybody who's deploying GPUs is quickly able to sell them right now. So even if there's some changes in the market, I don't expect that we're going to consolidate to five vendors. I would expect it's going to look more like national projects, uh, similar to how telecommunications companies generally you have one, two, three of these telco companies in given regions or in given countries around the world. And uh, possibly there's you know, a front end operator for that, but the people who deploy and own the GPUs and the data centers, uh, they, they have an interest in doing that in their own country. Yeah. Do we have time for one more question or should we wrap it up? Okay, so we'll, I can, we can talk on the side. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.